How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to another episode of Don't Starve Together Mod Light in which I attempt to cover some of the more interesting mods or mod in this case that I've been playing around with in the past week. So this week we're going to be taking a look at a rather dated mod called Archery Mod. This is the Don't Starve Together version of course by Zupelax. Uh, with a focus on bringing more ranged weapons to the game, and it includes full controller support. It's compatible with many other mods. Uh, there are a few, of course, that probably won't work with it, but by and large, it's a very compatible mod. In terms of mod configurations here, we can configure just about every aspect of the mod. Like, it would take me probably 15 minutes just to go through every single option here, so I'm not going to do that. I think it's just um, reasonable enough to say that pretty much every new item that this mod adds can be configured in its own way, and I personally find that valuable because there are some directions that the mod takes that I personally find disagreeable. Okay, so here we are in game, and if you're interested in any of the new weapons, uh, you simply go to the archery tab here, and uh, the, all the weapons are available to you. As you can see, there are quite a few of them, and I have already created them and put them in chests. So that will be the, our best way of looking at them. Obviously, like I said before, all of the resource requirements and whatnot can be configured for them, so we have a lot of flexibility there in terms of what can be built. So we're just going to take a look at them already crafted in these chests, as you can see right here. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. We have the wooden bow. Uh, we're going to go ahead and equip that. And then we have arrows that we use for our wooden bow. And there are quite a few. There's quite a variety of different arrows that you can have. Uh, you have the basic arrows. You have uh, gold arrows. And I'm not sure there's a whole lot of difference between the two of them. I couldn't spot any difference. You have the moon rock arrows. Once again, I couldn't spot any real difference besides the cost. Then we move on to more exciting arrows, like the fire arrow, which will ignite entities that it hits. Uh, the freezing arrow, uh, pretty much self-explanatory again. It freezes any entity it hits. And then there's the thunder arrow, which stuns them. In order to use our arrows, however, we're going to need a quiver. Uh, a quiver can be built using two pig skins and three ropes by default. And once we have that, it will self-equip into this slot right here. And then once you have that, we can equip our arrows. So let's go ahead and equip something fun. Let's put some fire fire arrows in there. Now we can go ahead and set something on fire, like this bird. There. Obviously, a single, a single arrow is not enough to outright kill a bird. And you'll notice that's uh, pretty common with all of the arrows. They're not... Hugely, they're not overpowered, I guess, is the point. Um, they most certainly feel fair in terms of the amount of damage that they do, and sometimes a bit unfair. We'll cover that in a minute. Now, the quiver can be closed in case you need it to. However, you can't really unequip it. Like, okay, you can do that, granted. But if I ever want to pick it back up, like, I can't just grab it and put it into my inventory. I'm not sure if this is just something that... I'm having a problem understanding, or if there's simply no way to pick it up. But this makes it very complicated to move it around if you have multiple quivers. I'm not sure why you would need multiple quivers, and I suppose the mod creator felt the same, but it just makes it a little bit more complicated because I can't think of any other item in the world that behaves quite like this quiver does in terms of it being a, an equipable item that you can't actually pick up and move or store in a chest. Uh, like you're not going to be able to, it, it's either equipped or it's laying on the ground and that's the end of the story. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the rest of the arrows. We're going to just uh, try them out a little bit, the interesting ones, and... I'll sort of show you how they work. Okay, so for this example, we're going to be using uh, a pig man. There, we can see a good example of what it's like for you to set one on fire using the fire arrows. Obviously, this could be a bit of a liability. He runs into stuff that actually causes him to spread the fire. I'm going to use the freezing arrow. Oop, that was the fire arrow. And there you will notice Okay, we have successfully frozen the pig. So that's pretty powerful, right? You might have noticed here, though, that one of my arrows fell. So this is one of the aspects of this mod that I kind of disagree with, is the idea that arrows can miss. So if you're familiar with darts, darts always will hit you, or will always hit their target. The arrows sort of differentiate themselves from those darts by occasionally missing. And the chance for it to miss increases depending upon the size of the entity. Uh, for example, if you try to shoot down bees, it's nearly impossible. I, I've went ahead and I've tried it. I think I don't think I've ever hit a bee using the bow. So 
it's one of those more a frustrating aspects of the game or of this mod because it introduces that RNG element into the game. And as if you're a follower of any of my other content, especially strategy related, you'll know that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of RNG because a lot of the time it feels really cheap how it's applied. Uh, so that, that was one of the aspects that I didn't care much for. But once again, it, that can be configured in the actual mod. So you don't have to worry about uh, worry too much about it. If you don't like it, you can always change it, right? That's the that's the point. Uh, let's try the Thunder Arrow. Let's go ahead and attack him with that. And you'll notice the lightning strikes him. And now he has little stars around him. So he doesn't chase me while he has those stars. So that could be useful for stunning certain enemies. And you just want to keep them in place a little bit. But you don't want to necessarily freeze them. Um... Obviously, the Thunder Arrow has some pretty uh, stringent requirements, so it might not be the most practical, but it's certainly an option. Okay, so let's move on to another weapon type. Uh, the next weapon type we're going to be looking at here is the Crossbow. So the Crossbow, in general, does twice as much damage as a regular bow would do. It has its own unique bolts as well as the standard bolt. Uh, the main difference here is that the crossbow is going to be, you have to prime the crossbow before you can actually use it. So um, we're going to go ahead and equip that, and now you'll see him wa walking over crossbow like this. But if we want to actually use it, like right now, he's not going to do anything. That won't fit in my current weapon. Okay, well, we have the wrong arrows equipped at the moment. Let's equip the basic bolts instead. Uh, and then we have to arm the crossbow like this, and you'll see there is a little bit of custom animation there for it. And once it's armed, we can now shoot at the pig, just like that. And it will, according to the documentation for it, it should do approximately twice the amount of damage that a regular bow does. Obviously, this is at the cost of convenience, given the fact that you have to arm it every single time you want to fire it. Uh, in addition to the basic bolts, we can also equip explosive bolts, which uh, behave similar to the fire bolts, except they also cause uh, an explosion. Yeah. I thought I armed it, but apparently I didn't. Here we go. So let's attack with that. There you'll notice. Not only did it cause a fire, but it also exploded and caused some structural damage to some of these. Okay, we're going to just we're going to have a, we're going to have problems here with fire apparently because of this. So you have to be careful about that. No point in staying through the night. So let's just uh, move on to the next day. In addition to the explosive bolt, which of course differentiates itself subtly from the fire bolt or the fire arrow. We also have the poison bolts. Let's go ahead and equip that, and I'll get another pig, and let's uh, let's shoot him with this. Oh, ooh, we have to a arm the crossbow first. Important to remember that. You can tell visually whether your or not your crossbow is armed because the um, the line on it will be pulled back. Let's go ahead and attack with this, and I missed. But that nevertheless caused him to aggro onto me. So that's what that's what I mean. Uh, it's kind of annoying that they can miss sometimes. But try shooting again. Okay. So now with the poison arrow, you'll notice the pig is now poisoned. And what poison does, at least in addition to other things, is it causes them to move slower. So this could be especially useful if a mob is chasing you that is particularly fast and difficult to get away from. Perhaps to give you just a little bit of distance. And you also notice that. After the poison cloud, uh, he de-aggroed, the pig de-aggroed from me. Obviously, that probably wouldn't be the case if the mob itself was not at least neutral, uh, but it's certainly an option there. Uh, so the poison bolt, I'm not sure if it actually does poison kind of damage, where it will deal damage over time, uh, but it most certainly does slow the entities down that you shoot with it, and you can tell visually whether or not the entity is poisoned by the little green cloud of poison and flies, kind of like a plague cloud surrounding that enemy character so let's go back uh, that pretty much concludes the crossbow demonstration so let's go back put that crossbow away in here and we're going to next use the magic bow so the magic bow is another one of the bows that this mod has introduced and the magic bow works similar to regular bows but it, instead of having actual ammunition it has fuel so you're going to be fueling it up there are three types of fuel you can use the nightmare fuel the fireflies ball and the blue goop. Now, most people are probably either going to be using Nightmare Fuel or the Fireflies Ball. So the Nightmare Fuel is pretty much the standard stuff. So we can go ahead and right-click to add that fuel, 50% for each uh, add uh, for each Nightmare Fuel. And like that, we can shoot at entities with it. So in other words, each, it's, each arrow, each magic arrow costs 10%, and it also costs you some uh, sanity. Here we go. It looks like to be too sanity for each of these regular arrows. All right, down to 92. 
and there. Uh, the pig man has successfully fallen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get another... Um, well, as a matter of fact, I could just do it this way. I'm going to now take the fireflies ball and use that to add fuel. And I'm going to bring another pig man. We're going to try shooting at this one. You'll notice that that time, even though I didn't actually hit the pig man, it knocked me down to 180 uh, sanity, down to 170. And why this is that one 160. So I'm losing 10 sanity each shot. And you may be wondering, wow, that's that's pretty significant. This better be doing a lot of damage, right? It doesn't do a lot of damage. Instead, what it does, the idea behind it is that this is the light equivalent. You're supposed to be using this for shooting nightmare creatures. I decided to go ahead and bring in a nightmare creature so that we could uh, sort of demonstrate what the fireflies ball is supposed to be used for. Okay, so here we are. I most certainly can shoot at the crawling horror at the moment, so let's go ahead and do that. And watch it. Uh, 30, 30 sanity at the moment. Shoot at it. 35. Even though, I think, even though if you miss, you'll still get that additional boost. Now it's up to 40, 45, 50, 55, 75. So obviously when I killed it, I got that additional sanity boost. So just from killing one crawling horror, I think we got about 40 um, sanity back, which is pretty significant. I also believe that the when fueled with the fireflies ball, the bow sort of does double damage to these entities. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I read, I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure I read that it does deal additional damage. Okay, so that pretty much covers the nightmare fuel. We already demonstrated that as well as the fireflies ball when using the magic bow. One other thing that should be noted is that even if you fuel the magic bow with like, let's say the nightmare fuel, and then later on, even though it hasn't fully depleted, like let's say it's at 80%, you add the fireflies ball to it, the fireflies ball will take precedent and the remaining, uh, yeah, and any use of the bow remaining will always default to the the stats, the damage stats that the Firefly Ball would inflict. Okay, so in, in addition to the Firefly's Ball, we also have the Blue Goop. Now, the Blue Goop is rather difficult to demonstrate because it heals entities that you shoot at. And, and this could be useful in combat scenarios, perhaps, and don't starve together when you're actually with other players. I don't have any other players with me here at the moment, obviously, so it's a little bit harder to demonstrate. If I had the mod that enabled health stats above the heads of mo uh, mobs, I could probably do that. But we're just going to take the developer's word for it at the moment and uh, sort of just move on to the other... Um, ranged weapon that this mod includes and that is the musket let's go ahead and get the musket out put the magic bow back the musket is very similar to the crossbow and i'm unsure of why there was necess uh, why it was necessary to make a distinction uh, it's ammo as there was only one type is the musket bullet so we're going to equip the musket once equipped the musket has to be reloaded so you can see there's a little animation there he primes the musket uh, fills it up and everything and uh, then we can shoot at something. So let's go ahead. And here we have another pig man. So go ahead and take a shot at him. Um, obviously, the speed at which he reloads the musket is a hu huge downside here. It takes longer to reload the musket than even reloading the crossbow would take. So um, I'm not exactly sure what sort of situation you might find yourself in where a musket would actually be beneficial, except probably the most justifiable excuse which of course be to hunt down one of these rotten no good birds. So the purd can be destroyed with pretty much one shot from the musket, which which is kind of cool. It's my best use case scenario for the musket because uh, it does take too long to refill. It doesn't do that much damage. I think it does a little bit more damage than the crossbow, but I think it also has less accuracy. So it, in all, overall, the musket is like one of those really weird uh, additional weapons, I think. It's hard to really see its application because it seems to have a lot of overlap with other um, better ranged weapons that were included in this mod. But that pretty much covers all the new weapons that were introduced in this mod. As you can see from right here, this menu, where we covered pretty much everything that was in there. One thing I think about range is that Don't Starve makes it particularly weak due to the fact that you really can't be stealthy or anything in the game. Like, that's not a real ability. Other games where you play a ranged class, you usually have the ability to keep your enemies at range, or at least the more reasonable ability to do that. And uh, in Don't Starve Together, that's really not an option. Uh, 
at the end of the day, the best weapon, of course, for anything is going to be a melee weapon. So it's one of those kind of flavorful items that maybe it's not going to rule the roost, but uh, makes the game more interesting, right? Once again, that is the archery mod for Don't Stuff Together. Now, if I read the comments correctly for this mod, the creator is actually working on an update for it. I'm going to be bringing some improvements to it as well, so I think it was well worth covering it for that alone. Uh, obviously, mods that enjoy continued development, I think, should enjoy the increased visibility as well for them. Um, but as always, if you're interested in checking it out for yourself, the links to it will be in the description below this video. If you enjoyed it, thank the creator for taking the time to create it and share it with us. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope to see you next time.